Well, suddenly it's like somebody opened the floodgates in the Senate Judiciary Committee. They approved unanimously 16 nominees for judge today, including the former Monmouth County Sheriff Joseph Oxley. And then the full Senate started taking action. Joining us now from the State House is the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Nicholas Scutari. Senator, it's good of you to join us. Uh, why the sudden burst of activity? What happened? Well, it wasn't so suddenly. We've been working on this for weeks and weeks and weeks on a regular basis with uh, the governor's senior staff and me personally dealing with uh, members of the Senate and the governor's uh, top staff. And we've been working on uh, coming to agreements on various nominations. And this is the beginning of the culmination of uh, the agreement that we've struck. The Oxley nomination obviously was the one that generated an awful lot of headlines. His alleged association with Solomon Dweck, there was some shall we say, some tension in the room, we're told, according to some reports, about uh, that aspect of it. Was the Oxley nomination ever in doubt? Because the votes obviously were there when all was said and done. Well, I mean, was it in doubt at some point in time that, that everything's in doubt in the beginning uh, until it's no longer in doubt? And in this particular instance, uh, Mr. Oxley uh, passed the judiciary and passed the full Senate today, uh, and I was in support of it as well. There was a lot of uh, news stories and things of that sort going around out there, but at the end of the day, people were satisfied and, uh, and voted on them. Why nobody from Essex County yet? That's been the bone of contention that has created perhaps the most strife and, and the greatest divide between your committee and uh, Democratic leadership and the governor. Well, uh, you know, Essex County just wasn't part of this package, just wasn't part of these discussions, but that'll be one of our next top agenda items going forward to try to alleviate the, the situation there with uh, an, an extraordinarily large amount of judicial vacancies. Uh, you know, you have to be very careful in, 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 in filling these positions. And for me personally, to delve into those situations, I have to do it with great care. Uh, and uh, I think we've done that and we made great strides today. Uh, I understand that, but can you take us behind the scenes a little bit? Because the big question that I have is what is it that was said, what is it that was negotiated that allowed this logjam to break? Well, I mean, there was just finally a lot of conversations and a meeting of the minds. They have a new director of appointments, Matt McDermott, uh, who put a lot of time and effort into that from the governor's uh, staff and myself as well, have become personally involved with the process. And, uh, and that's, that's how we move forward. You know, we, you know, at, at some point in time, we started to say, these are the things we can agree upon, some things that we can't agree upon, and let's move on forward with the people and the nominees that we can agree upon. And I think it was uh, an important uh, milestone today. One of the things that you apparently have not been able to agree upon yet are the governor's two nominees for the state Supreme Court. Where does that stand? Well, I, the one thing I'll tell you is I think the superior court level is really the one that touches people's lives on an everyday basis on, and the one that really is the most important. When you think about it, the Supreme Court is, is is ruling each and every day with a full complement of seven justices. Uh, and the Superior Court is really where we have our biggest problems. When people can't get their uh, divorces, Senator, that, pardon me. And they can't, that and may, they can't, well, and they can't get there and they can't that, get their matters heard, that may, then, then that's really when people's lives are affected. That, that may or may not be, but the point is that obviously the, the fact that these two gentlemen haven't gotten at least a hearing is something that the governor is, is taking you to task for. And, and uh, you know, you may have more cases going through other levels of the court, but some would say, you got two vacancies on the state's highest court. Why are you not prepared to take action on the nominees? Well, I'll tell you this, Mike, you got to walk before you can run. And I think we took some good steps today in filling some very important positions. And that was not part of the discussions during the last month where I've talked to their staff almost on a daily basis, probably on a daily basis, half a dozen times per day, plus uh, coordinating these particular new nominees with uh, the individual senators that represent those counties. So it, it was a big task today. So, uh, that's something that we'll deal with in the future. So, Senator, you're telling me that in the, in the conversations you've had with the governor's new appointments uh, coordinator that, that the, they haven't said to you, when are you going to take a hearings for our guys? And you haven't said to them, we have no intention or we'll do it later or, or whatever. It hasn't come up? That wasn't part of the discussion for today's purposes and for this big, big package of Superior Court judges. It was not part of the discussion. I'm not saying it won't be going forward, but right now we're, we're, we're concentrating our efforts on this. Just like you asked me about Essex County. I mean, you're talking about lots of things are important. This is the first thing that we tackled. This has the largest uh, influence statewide. We dealt with nominations in Monmouth County, Middlesex County, o uh, Union County, Morris County, Camden County, all throughout the state. Uh, those courts are going to get needed bodies, needed needed top-rated judicial candidates uh, to help their problems. Senator, I have to leave it there. Appreciate you taking the time, sir. Thank you. Thank you.